All right, hey everybody, Evan here from devasun.com. And in this video, we're gonna be covering dispatching custom events. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new component here. We're gonna call this component form.svelte. And of course, we're gonna add our three tags, our script tag, then we're gonna add our form tag, and lastly, our styling tag. All right, so I'm gonna leave this form alone for a little bit. We're gonna go up to our script in our app.svelte component, and I'm gonna create an array. So I'm gonna say let food equals, and then we're gonna set it to an empty array. And here we're just gonna create two placeholder objects so i'm going to say the name we'll say this is an apple the color we're going to say red and of course the id which is going to be unique so we're just going to say zero for this and then we're going to create another object and this one's going to be let's say carrot and the color is going to be orange and we're going to say id is one and before we continue i'm actually going to change food to foods here and now if we go to our main tag we're going to create an each loop so i'm going to say hashtag each and then i'm going to say foods add as food and then we're going to put our custom id that we have attached to each one of our objects so i'm going to say food.id like so then we're going to put a closing each tag and now with inside here we're going to list our foods so i'm going to create a div we're going to give this div a class name and it's going to have a class of food item and then inside here we're going to have a h3 tag and i'm just going to say curly braces food.name and i'm going to put a p tag and we're going to say color is curly braces food dot color and then one last thing we're going to actually add some styling to our food item here so we're going to give it a border i'm going to say two pixel solid gray and then we're going to have text align be left and padding we're just going to give it eight pixels a margin top of 20 pixels and lastly we're going to change our main styling here i'm going to align our items to be flex start so that way they are shifted to the left and i'm also going to make the width of our food items 100%. So it stretches across the entire screen. All right, so now if we go to our browser, we can see our two fruit that we created. Now let's go ahead and go to our form component that we made earlier. And now here is where we're going to create a form that will allow the user to create a food item and then add it to our foods array. So now let's think about what kind of input fields we're going to need. We have the name, which is the name of the food and the color, which is the color of the food. So that that sounds to me like we're gonna need two inputs because again, we don't need an input for the ID because this needs to be unique. So we're just going to randomly generate this ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a input here and the input type is going to be equal to text. We're gonna have our placeholder be, let's just say name. And then we're gonna bind this value equal to name, which we're going to create that variable up in our script tag like so. And now we need to create another input and this type is going to be text once again. Our place Placeholder is going to be color and we're going to bind the value color and then create a variable up at the top here and we're also going to add a button to submit our form I'm just going to call it add food and now we need to make it so whenever we click on this button it's going to activate a on submit function in our form so the way we do this is we type on submit and we're going to have it set equal to a function that handles our submit so let's go ahead and create that right now so I'm going to say const handle submit like so and then we're going to pass in the reference to that function but keep in mind we should use the event modifier prevent default and basically what this event modifier does is it's going to prevent the default submit event from happening meaning the page is not going to refresh when we click on the add food instead we're going to be handling the submit functionality ourselves and if you're confused about event modifiers i actually have a video that i did on that so if you want to go check out it's called event modifiers uh it'll cover other event modifiers such as once and self but in this case we're going to be using the prevent default modifier so that we can handle the functionality of submitting ourselves and now in our handle submit function we're going to create an object that's going to store these two values that we input here so let's go ahead and create an object i'm going to say const food and here we're going to have three properties our name which is going to be set equal to our name variable here the color which is going to be set to our color variable here and lastly the id which which needs to be a unique ID. However, in this case, I'm just going to say math.random, and this is going to generate a random number. Now, typically you don't want to do this because this random functionality can actually return the same number twice. However, the chances of that are very, very low, but it is possible. So it's not a good idea to do this in actual production because again, there is a chance that this number could be the same. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna do this to keep everything simple. And now let's actually go ahead and log 
log this food object that we have just created. And let's go back to our app.svelte. And now in our script, we're going to import our form. So I'm going to say import form from form.svelte. And at the top of our main tag, we're going to put form like so. And now if we go to our browser, we're going to see we have our form up at the top here. And so if I go ahead and add, let's say grape, for example. So I'm going to say grape for the name and for the color, we're going to say purple. I'm going to click add food. And now we can see our object that we just created. We have the color, which is purple, the name, which is grape, and the ID, which is a random number that you see from our math.random here. But how are you going to get this food object and place it inside of our foods array that we have? Because again, this is stored inside our form.svelte, whereas our array is stored in our app.svelte. Well, what we can do is we can dispatch a custom event. And the way we do this is if we go to our form.svelte, I'm going to go up at the top of our script tag here and say import create event dispatcher from svelte. And this is going to let us access the create event dispatcher function. So we're actually going to create a variable. And I'm going to call it dispatch and we're going to set it equal to create event dispatcher, which is the function we just imported here. And basically now we're storing that function inside this dispatch variable. So now what we're going to do is instead of console logging food here, we're going to actually dispatch our food object. So I'm going to go ahead and type dispatch, which again, is the variable we created here. You can call this whatever you want. I just call the dispatch because it makes sense in this case. And we're going to put parentheses. And this is going to take two arguments in this example. So the first argument is going to be a string. And inside this string, we're going to put the name of the function that we want to call in our app.svelte. So I'm going to call this function add food. And then I'm going to say comma. And now here is where we're going to actually want to put our food object that we want to dispatch. So I'm going to put food as the second argument. And now that we have dispatched food, I'm going to go back to our app.svelte and inside our form tag here, just like we do on click, which in itself is an event, we can do on add food. And you see there's actually already a helper tool that tells us add food because the Svelte extension that I have on VS Code basically says, okay, you are dispatching a custom event right here called add food. So now we know that you can use on dot add food because you've dispatched that custom event. And now we can say on on add food and we can set it equal to a function. So let's go ahead and create that function. I'm going to say const add food and inside here we're going to actually accept an event. So I'm just going to put E Then we're going to do an arrow function and now I'm just going to console log E and then we're going to pass in the reference to that function which we called add food. And now if we go to our browser, if I enter grape and we set the color to purple, I'm going to click add food and now you can see custom events in our console and we have a lot of stuff here. Now, I'm not going to go into everything inside of this object here, but we're going to go into one thing in particular, which is the detail object. And if we click on the detail object, we're going to see our object that we created with the name gray color purple and the unique ID that we've created. And this is basically what we want to focus on right now. So again, we need to access that detail property on the custom event object. So to do that, all we have to do is take our event, which we called E in this case, and we're going to say E dot detail. And now if we go back to our browser and I go ahead and insert the grape food here, we just see our object. Okay, now it's time to actually add that object into our array. So it might make sense to just say foods dot push, and then we can push our object like so, but this is not what we want to do. And the reason is, is because we're not actually reassigning foods to anything here. And in Svelte, the only way Salt is going to actually update our page is if a variable is reassigned to something else. But since push isn't actually reassigning our foods variable to anything, we can't do this because it's not going to update our page. So in order for Svelte to know that we are updating our food array is we have to say const food and we're going to set it equal to e.detail because again, the e.detail contains our object. And then we're going to take our foods array and we're going to reassign it to be an array and inside this array we're going to say food which is the variable that we just created that stores our object and then we're going to say comma and then we're going to say three dots foods and these three dots basically signify that we want to take the current value of foods and spread these objects inside of our foods array using the spread operator here and so essentially what we're doing is we're saying okay we're adding
adding the new food to the beginning of the array, but then we're taking everything else that we currently had inside our array beforehand, and we're just adding it to the end of the array. So basically this is adding our new food to be at the beginning of our array, and then we're taking everything else that we had previously and just appending it to the end of the array. And now I'm gonna go ahead and comment this console log for now. So just like before, we're gonna say great, and then I'm gonna say the colors can be purple. We're gonna click add food, and now we see at the top, we have a grape and the color is set to purple. And if I were to do this again, let's say banana and we're going to say yellow for the color and I click add food, we're going to see banana at the top. And this is pretty much how we dispatch custom events inside of Svelte. So just to recap, inside our form.svelte, what we did was we imported the create event dispatcher. We attached that to a variable that we called dispatch. We created this form. When we submit, we're going to submit it to the handle submit function, which is this that we created right here. Inside our handle submit, we created an object that's going to store our name, color, and a unique ID. And then we're going to dispatch that as add food, and we're going to pass in our food object that we just created. And now when we dispatched add food, if we go to our app that's felt, you can see now we can access add food by saying on add food. And then we set that equal to a reference of our add food function, which is what we created right here. And again, when we do this, it's going to pass in an event parameter and we can access the detail property of our events by saying e.detail and we store that object in our food variable and then we are reassigning our foods array that we have up here to be what it was originally plus the new food that we created right here. Anyway that's going to do it for this video. If you need any help feel free to leave a comment down below or you could join the Devsend discord server and either myself or someone else will be able to help you out there. Anyway thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.